This organic chemistry themed level of response exam question from the OCRA specification in chemistry has got a topic in it which is incredibly important. And whilst it might not be as shiny and obvious as a spectroscopy exam question or as mini whiteboard friendly as curly arrow mechanisms, the percentage yield component of this particular level of response exam question is incredibly common in the OCRA papers. So you need to make sure you've got this skill in your wheelhouse ahead of the summer exams. It's also got some aliphatic pathway stuff in it, which is again normally represented in flowchart questions and incredibly important. So I'm going to take you through this exam question and I'll show you how I would lay out my answer to make sure I get the maximum number of marks possible. Okay, so here's my answer, and this is from 2021's Paper 2 exam, and again, this is on the OCRA specification in A-level chemistry. What I'm going to do is set the scene for you and describe some of my annotations before I start going through the different parts to my answer. First off, a student intends to synthesize compound A that we can see over here using the two-stage route below. And we need to plan a two-stage synthesis to prepare 5.44 grams of compound A starting from the chloromethylbenzene. So we're going to be using stage one to take us to an intermediate functional group, and we don't know what that is just yet, and then out of that intermediate functional group over to stage two. Some people take this term intermediate in the wrong way, and so lots of people think it's like the intermediate in a curly arrow mechanism. For this kind of question, because we can see that it's a pathways question, this is going to be a whole different functional group that we're going to have to go into from the haloalkane and out of to make the carboxylic acid. Further information in the question says that we need to assume that the overall percentage yield of compound A over here on the right from the chloromethylbenzene over here on the left is 25%. So that means we're losing 75% of the moles of the chloromethylbenzene that are being incorporated into this procedure to try and produce compound A. Now, we need to include in our answer the mass of the chloromethylbenzene that would be required to make the 5.44 grams of compound A. And we also need to include, and I'll call this my second part to the question, reagents and equations where appropriate to describe that two-step synthesis. When I look at my percentage yield calculation then, what I'm going to have to do is take into account that the 5.44 grams of compound A that I'm going to try and synthesize with this method is actually going to be that 25% that was successfully achieved. So I've got to try and plan to make a theoretical 100% and then just accept that three quarters of that is going to go elsewhere and then leave me with that one quarter, which is going to be the 5.44 grams. So in my calculation, I'm going to scale up and then I'm going to move over with this one to one ratio to determine the mass of the chloromethylbenzene that I need to do the calculation. You'll also notice that I've labelled up the MR values here, or you can call them molar masses. In organic chemistry, we very often interchange between the two. And I've done this because it's incredibly important not to use the wrong one at the wrong stage. And we can see here that I've done this alongside the molecules, and that's one of my tips for you in the exam. So my part one here, because all the OCR instructions tend to be across just a couple of lines here, my part one is going to be the calculation. So I'm going to start off by determining how many moles are in this 5.44 grams of compound A that I've been told to synthesize. And it turns out if I do mass divided by the MR here, then I get a mole value, which is 0 0.04. And then there's trailing zeros there for the mole figure. Now, remember, that's my 25% that actually gets achieved. That's the one that we're going to get at the end of all of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform this actual number of moles into a theoretical number of moles that I should aim to make and then accept that three quarters of it is going to go elsewhere. So what I'm going to do is take that mole value and divide it by 25 to get me a 1% figure and then multiply it by 100 to figure out what mole value I should aim to make and then that 25% yield will be achieved from that. What I'm looking to make, therefore, here is 0 0.160 mol of compound A. That's what I should aim to make, and then the percentage yield takes over. Now, if we look at the procedure across this two-step synthesis, I've mentioned this before, but the ratio here between the chloromethylbenzene and the compound A is one-to-one. -one. So I can therefore suggest that the number of moles of the chloromethylbenzene I should start out with is going to be the same figure, the 0 0.160 mol. 
it's very easy then to transform this into a mass. I'm going to do the moles multiplied by the MR value. And this takes me back to the question to make sure I'm using the right one, that 126.5. And that means I'm going to get a mass value here of 20.24 grams. And I always suggest mass values here to two decimal places for this particular style of exam question, especially when it's a level of response in a practical context. But the mark scheme did actually only look for 20.2 grams, but 20.24 is absolutely fine. And considering the trailing zeros and the mole values up here, I don't see why you wouldn't include this. Next up, I need to suggest the two-step synthesis. And I'm going to go back to the uh, scheme just here so you can see where we're going to and from going from that chloromethylbenzene across to compound A. Now, when we look closely at this, we draw our attention to these extra annotations I've put on the right. I wouldn't put these in the exam. These are, these are really just for you. And so what we can see, though, is we go from one carbon and a chlorine coming off the aromatic ring to the carbon with another carbon on it now. So we've actually extended the carbon chain. We've increased the total number of carbons. Now, what that means has been used here is some sort of cyanide. So we're looking here at sodium or potassium cyanide. And because it's the haloalkane being used at the start just here, that's going to be in ethanol. And it's going to be usually potassium cyanide for this. And what happens is the halogen group is substituted off by a CN minus, and then that forms a nitrile functional group, which is a carbon triple bonded to a nitrogen. We also make some KCl here because we used KCN and the Cl has been kicked off. This actually does have a curly arrow mechanism with it as well, but we weren't asked for any mechanism details by the exam question. Furthermore, it's worth pointing out we're also told not to include any purification details, so hopefully there's nothing included in your answer about something like a recrystallization, for instance. Now, this nitrile is our intermediate. I now need to transform the nitrile functional group into a carboxylic acid one, which is what compound A has. I, I really don't get why they've included the aromatic ring for this one, other than maybe it's trying to keep it a bit more of a challenging example, because the aromatic ring is really just a distractor. Maybe that's why they included it. It doesn't do anything. I'm focusing now on this nitrile group here, and I want to turn it into the carboxylic acid we see in compound A. So I use an acid hydrolysis. Now here, I typically have HCl when I teach this, and I make NH4Cl in the products, but I've noticed a lot of the OCR resources these days are leaning into just H plus with the H2O. Remember, the slash doesn't mean instead of, it means with in organic chemistry. And so I should start using H plus more, but the Mart scheme for uh, people like me did include the HCl, so I've put it in the little pinky purple color here because it was an option. But here we've got two moles of water with the H plus and the nitrile functional group to make the carboxylic acid. And we've got this ammonium ion over here on the right as well. You might look at this question and think, why is there so much space? This is a lot of space you've been given for a few steps. I think it's because they assume some people might want to use skeletal formula to represent their molecules in the two-step synthesis suggestion, and that would be absolutely fine to do so. I've just gone for structural for the benefit of this question, as I think it's easier to see all at once. Also, just before you go, I want to remind you that for stage one, you did have to suggest this in ethanol. Don't forget that. I know I mentioned it previously, but I really want to make sure you have that included in your description because it isn't just the reaction equation for this one. We've got this special solvent condition, which is incredibly important. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope it has made a difference. But before you go, I do need some help. Please leave this video a like before you go because it really does help support my channel and let YouTube know I still exist. There's loads of good stuff around the screen now and links to my other video content in the description down below. So make sure you check that out before you head off. Until next time though, everybody, happy revising.